What's up, Kinfolk? Welcome to the number one ranked show. I am your host, RJ Young. Thank you for watching on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or listening wherever you get your podcast. Today, it is NFL Draft Day, and I am very pleased to be joined by quarterback Matt Corral, who is in Vegas, who spoke with us in Vegas and is going to go through the full process of what it feels like to be selected as a quarterback in the NFL draft. I talked with him a bit about what the last four months have been like for him, how he has prepared for this day, and he gives a little insight into watching practice at Ole Miss. And I know you, like I, have been craving college football, and we will talk more about college football. But first, I want you to listen to Matt Corral speak with me, and then I'm going to tell you about five of my diamonds in the rough as we head through this really cool weekend that is the NFL draft experience. I'm pleased to be joined by former Ole Miss quarterback and a quarterback in Vegas for the NFL draft, Matt Corral. Matt, how you doing, man? I'm good. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be here. Nah, man, I'm excited about you because you're the first quarterback that I've got to talk to in 2022. So I'm going to pick your brain. Right. And the first thing it. I want to know is, have you planned or how did you plan for the NFL draft? Like, how did you get here? Oh, that was a loaded question. Um, you know, really, it's just been taking it day by day. I mean, throughout this process, there's a lot of things, a lot of noise. And really, you just got to focus on the main thing. And, uh, and that's really just getting done what's got to get done from training to, you know, getting a film study in to, you know, your nutrition. You know, all the way from A to Z, from the marketing uh, commitments you have, and really just getting on Zooms with teams. And, um, you know, whenever they reach out, you're there. You're there to talk to them, whatever they want to talk about, as long as they want. And, you know, kind of just been uh, kind of just been, been that process every single day so, until now. And now it's starting to, like, just pull back a little bit and starting to relax. And, you know, throughout this process, I feel like I put my, put my best foot forward and, um, I'm confident in, in the work I put out in my film and for what I bring to the table as a quarterback, which is ultimately came to my decision of uh, coming to Vegas. Well, let's talk about that, right? You're in Vegas. That is not guaranteed for anybody, number one. Number two, there are some guys that would rather not be in Vegas for the NFL draft, no matter where they think they're going to get selected. Why did you choose to be one of the 21 players in Las Vegas for the NFL draft? Really, it was, you know, I was, I, I did think about it a little bit, um, but man, this is what I wanted to do still. Ever since I found out about football as a sport and when I found out I could make it a career, um, you know, why not? Why not experience it from head to toe? Why not go do, um, you know, the actual NFL draft in Vegas, go through that process and, you know, just, just experience it. You know, you only you only get drafted once, and I kind of want to just wanted to be able to experience that with me and my family. It's true. You only get drafted once, but it doesn't always go really, really well for some folks. I'm saying mm -hmm. that to say you've seen guys in the green room, right? Do you have an iconic moment in your mind of seeing a player that you looked up to in the green room go through this process? Yeah, I never watched. Um, I never watched. I mean. I've seen I've seen it a little bit, but not particularly in detail of, you know, I, I know I know what it consists of, but I know how, you know, I can only imagine how it's going to feel waiting in there and uh, just waiting for the phone to ring. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with it and I'm familiar with, you know, I got the whole rundown on, uh, you know, how long it's going to be, you know, what the emotion is going to be like and you you not being able to, you know, really show show your emotion you know you just got to keep a straight face and understand that when the opportunity is presented presented to you you got to make the most of that opportunity and Man, i mean I personally that you're game planning this like i just want like you have it you have a mindset right now going into the nfl draft room i love hearing that yeah i mean you know my personal experience has just been uh you know my whole mindset about this is I know I'm going to be drafted. I know that for a fact. It doesn't matter, if, you know, first, second, third, fourth. Fifth. I, I, I know I'm going to get an opportunity and, and the confidence and the time and, you know, the work, the work I put in, that's all I need. 
I just need one one team to take a shot at me, and uh, I'm gonna. I promise them they're not gonna regret it. Right on, man. So, as you're going through this four month process, that again you only get to go through once. What have you learned about yourself? Really, just what type of what type of learner I am, you know, because a lot of these, you know, what type of learner, why I surround myself with, you know, certain people, um, you know, why you really you find out why you are the way you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my experience, it, it seems like every stage I've been on, it's kind of tied together as to, you know, maybe an experience made me this way. And that's kind of how I've always been because it happened at such a young age. And, you know, it was a big deal for me at the time. And so that's kind of how I, you know, his journey. And, you know, that's kind of, you know, how I, how I depict, um, you know, my tendencies just because you're going to be you when you go through this process, you're just talking about yourself. And for me, that was, that was different. I, I'm not one of those guys that really talks about myself a lot. You know, I, I really like to be under the radar and, um, you know, just go about my day. But, you know, when you're in these meetings with these teams and, and these executives, they're, they're going to want to know you from head to toe. So they're going to address every single thing about you and, you know, talking about that and being able to, you know, tell them why. And if it was, you know, regardless, positive or negative, tell them why and what effect it had on you. And if it was negative, just, you know, did you learn from it? What did you learn from it? And uh, really, I mean, that's been the whole whole process. And you, you definitely learn a lot about yourself just going through that because it's, it's, it's happening every single day when teams are reaching out, trying to get to know you more. It sounds to me a lot like when you're going through recruiting. The bones of this show, what I do is talk about college football. And I wonder how much of the NFL draft process to you resembled being recruited in high school. Man, really not much. It's mm. more of an interview because now you're not picking. They're picking you. So mm. you really got to sell yourself, but at the same time, just be yourself, you know, be yourself. You're going to end up exactly where you need to be, at, uh, exactly where you need to be at the right time. And, um, you know, when you try to, you know, be something you're not, it's just, it just doesn't work out. You know, you want a team to like you for you and, you know, be around those people that want to be around you. It's a very interesting place for a quarterback to be because you guys by nature want to give credit to everybody else. Right. And you wanting yep. to talk about yourself, but not in such a way that you come on strong. And I understand that. But let's not be coy about this. You led Ole Miss to one of its best seasons in history, in school history. You're up there with Eli. You're up there with Arch. You're up there with the best quarterbacks to ever play at that school. And they're on the good foot going into 2022. How good do you think they can be? And more to the point, what do they have to do? to represent the SEC West in the SEC championship game? Really? I mean, they reloaded from, mm. from the transfer portal. You know, there's not a lot of young guys on that team. Um, you know, I was just watching practice. They're, they could be very, very good. But at the same time, you know, they need some, they need, they need, there needs to be someone in that top dog position that, that tells everybody what to do. And this is how we do things around here. You know, there hasn't been that, you know, there's leaders on the team, but there hasn't been that one, that one specific leader that, 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 you know, takes the keys to the car and really, you know, this is how we're, this is how we're going to do things around here. And I really think that just comes down to the, you know, really the QB battle. You know, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a quarterback as the leader of the team, but you, you definitely want it to be. And, um, you know, I, I think those guys are working hard, you know, you got Jackson Dart and uh, Luke Altmaier, who, Luke's been there, you know, he was in the same, doing the same process that I was doing when I was um, preparing for games week in and week out. And, you know, he was there every step of the way. So I'm, you know, I, I, have, I have a lot of confidence in Luke and him being able to, um, you know, run it back and what we did last year and just take, uh, carry on from, uh, uh, from last year, but go take it a step further. You can't dangle out there that you went to practice to me and not have me ask you, who flashed outside of the quarterback to you? Zach Evans, Ulysses Bentley, Michael Trigg. Who we got? Okay, Zach Evans and Michael Trigg. Those guys are freaks. Those guys are freaks. Zach Evans. Zach Evans is going to be a problem. Zach Evans is going to be a problem for a lot of a lot of defenses for sure. 
No, I, I appreciate that. Um, Zach's one of my favorite guys coming out of high school. I don't know that I've ever seen another tailback like him. There are guys that are as good, but I don't know that I've seen anybody like him. What he was doing in Houston was unquestionably awesome. Matt, other than keeping up with your workouts and training, how have you been resting and keeping it together as you put in the hours to prepare for tomorrow? So really it's been, uh, you know, a lot of marketing in there. And, you know, when I, when I approach my marketing, I like to be um, authentic. You know, I like to stay true to myself and, you know, partner with people who I think, uh, who I think their product's going to be in use every, every single day. And, you know, one of my big partnerships was with Sleep Number, with the Sleep Number 360 smart bed. And they've been, you know, nothing but great to me. They help me, they help me with my sleep. They can track my sleep and, you know, Again, sleep sleep's one of the biggest things to recovery, and, and in my field, that's that's a, that's the best thing you can, you, you can have. You know, the base, the best uh, the best ability is availability, and being able to recover and you know track your sleep, know how many hours you're getting, understand just your body and the way it works in and out. I think it's it's going to be the game changer on the next level. Hey man, the last dude that I talked to repping sleep number is Josh Jacobs. He went in the first round. I'm going to say I'm a pretty good good luck charm. So I'm just throwing that out there for you. <laughs> let's okay? go. You, me, sleep number, let's make it work. Let's make it happen. Matt Corral, former Ole Miss quarterback and future NFL quarterback, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. My thanks to Matt Corral for joining us on the number one ranked show. Very excited to see where he gets selected. Talk with him the day before this aired. So, you know, you can hear me sitting there saying tomorrow and I made a boo-boo because you're not supposed to do that as a broadcaster. But we're here now and I'm very interested in breaking a fourth wall with you because, yes, this is a conversation. You got to tell me what you think in the comments. You got to tell me what you think on the tweets, especially as we're in list season once again. Okay, so I got five diamonds in the rough going into this NFL draft. Not necessarily the kind of guy that's getting drafted in the first 32 picks, but certainly the kind of guy for which somebody's going to select him and feel really great about just who they have selected. And I'm going to give him a head start, right? I'm going to give him a little insight because the thing about this league that I think gets lost is they don't watch a lot of college football. You'll know I watch all of the college football. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I find a way to watch college football. I find a way to watch the FCS. I find a way to tell you that UTSA is a diamond. I find a way to tell you Marcus Freeman ought to be a head coach. And then Jack Swerbeck, yo, RJ, I hear you, dog. I hear you. We're going to elevate Marcus Freeman to be our head coach. And we put him in a position to get back to the college football playoff in 2022. But now... I got to tell you what's really good with the NFL draft. All right, so let's start at number five and work our way to number one. So first guy on this list, an FCS champ, South Dakota State's Pierre Strong Jr. I love me some Pierre Strong, okay? Not just because my man is strong, but because he's strong. Ooh, he's strong. And he fast. Look at his speed. Flying away from everybody. He ran 4.37 seconds in the 40-yard dash, one of the fastest tailbacks in this group of tailbacks that is incredibly fast. He also ran with with TJ Logan, who you know that I feel very strongly about in the USFL. He's also at 5'10", 207, faster and heavier, or bigger, if you will, than Kyron Williams, which is saying quite a bit because Kyron was an extremely productive tailback at Notre Dame. Rushed for over 4,500 yards with 40 scores. And more importantly, if you are an NFL team, this man has the ability to take it to the house. 15 explosive plays for him of 40 yards or more in his career. And helped South Dakota State, the Jacks, come home with the Jacks. Because you'll remember, they were in a money in the bag segment as they went and beat the brakes off of Colorado State. I'm telling you, it was fun for me. And I can't wait to get back to doing that segment. I tease it because I want you to know we still got it in the bag, but I'm not going to pull it out today because, you know, it's NFL draft time. All right, number four on this list, BYU running back Tyler Algier. All right, so a couple of things here. If you're looking for sturdy, stout, and durable, this is your man. 
And not only is this your man, like my man Abram Smith, he was playing linebacker before they moved in the tailback, okay? Gets Arizona State, quarterback threw a pick. He said, it's cool. I got you. I'm going to run downhill. I'm going to climb over the top of this Arizona State defender, and I'm going to punch this ball free. We're going to recover it, get the ball back. Man, Arizona, Arizona State defender on the floor, dejected, because he just got stood up, put down by a BYU running back, but not just any running back, a dude that rushed for over 1,600 yards, 276 attempts for BYU in 2021, 23 touchdowns and 28 receptions for 199 yards, absolute player, and has the spirit of a hustler. It's a former walk-on that's going to get drafted, who's going to, I think, play a long time in the NFL. Love Tyler Algier's story. All right, moving to number three. Another small school dynamo, D'Angelo Malone. All right, so the comp here is Von Miller, okay? Because at about six foot three, 243, this dude is an outside linebacker with absolute speed coming off the edge. Perhaps the most value on the edge that you will see in this entire draft for the Hilltoppers. Led them in tackles and sacks for four seasons. Just video game numbers, according to my guy, Rob Rang, our NFL draft analyst at FoxSports.com. In a draft class loaded with edge rushers, Malone might be the most underrated of the bunch. He certainly was the most productive. 349 career tackles, 34 sacks, 60 tackles for loss, nine forced fumbles. You're getting production, you're getting value, you're getting speed. And you're getting a guy that a lot of people were sleeping on in high school coming out of the Atlanta area because he's just 198 pounds as a senior. He's up to 243 now. OK, that's a lot of weight that man has put on and he carries it very well at number two on the list. I got Romeo Dubs. OK, coming out of Nevada. This dude is comp to. Yes, I'm going to say it. Super Bowl MVP Cooper Cup. Extremely talented, tremendous high volume catcher and is the same height as one Cooper Cup at six foot two. Big play threat. Catching passes from Carson Strong, who probably gets drafted too. Went for over 3,300 yards, receiving 25 touchdowns in the past four years. Caught 225 passes over that span of time, too. I watched a lot of Nevada football because you'll know that the Mountain West, like Pac-12, was playing up till your boy was late. Like when I do the rankings, I'm watching Utah. I'm watching Nevada. I'm watching USC. I'm watching Hawaii. I'm watching lots of Romeo Dubs. And the way that this man is able to bend his body in space, to understand proprioception, which is where your body is in space, you can't teach that. And that's what you're drafting, right? You're drafting talent. You're not drafting skills. You're drafting talent. You're drafting guys that you can't teach them how to be fast, right? You can't teach them how to get open. And Romeo has this, another great value buy for any NFL team that is looking to perhaps add some speed and a little bit of wiggle at the wide receiver position. And we'll know that this league is all about speed and wiggle. They want Jalen Waddles and Tyreek Hills. That's what they want. All right, and number one on this list, I'm going to bring it all the way home. Go with offensive tackle out of Tulsa, Tyler Smith, all right? The comp here is Lyle Collins. He is that good. You'll see him out here at left tackle. The thing about him that sets him apart is he's a physical freak, right? He's fast. He's strong. He's nasty, okay? I lean on Jerry Ostrowski and Jeff Schwartz quite a bit when I'm talking about offensive tackles and offensive linemen because I'm a skill player and I don't pretend to be an expert about offensive line. So I put it to my homie, Jerry. I said, dude, I know that he went to our alma mater, but can he go? Is he a guy that I need to be talking about? I said, RJ, imagine a guy with the punch of Leon Searcy and a guy with the athleticism of Reuben Brown. And that is Tyler Smith. I want that guy. I want that guy because he's nasty. He's competitive. He got a bunch of holding penalties last year, but he got them because he would rather pick up the hold than give up the sack. I can't teach you to be that kind of competitive, right? I can't teach you to want it so bad that you're willing to penalize yourself so that you don't get your quarterback hit. And in that league, where the quarterback is the CEO of your franchise, you want a dude on that right tackle position that is absolutely going to stunt and maul people. That's who Tyler Smith is. Big, fast, strong. If you teach him some pass pro technique, He's going to be a monster in the NFL. Okay, those are my five diamonds in the rough 
for this year, this year's, this weekend's NFL draft. We'll be back next week on Tuesday, where we will talk through the USFL in week three as we got a doozy on Big Fox on Saturday night. We got a prize fight between Birmingham and the Breakers. And I've been to every single USFL game so far. Birmingham is showing out for their Stallions. They are the best attended game week to week. And now they're in prime time on a Saturday night. You got Larry Fedor versus Skip Holtz. Both guys are familiar with each other from Conference USA. Skip Holtz helped recruit Larry Fedor to the USFL. They both have eight bowl game victories. This feels like a bowl game. They're undefeated. Somebody's O has got to go. I'm excited to see how this game goes, and we'll talk about it on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, we're going to do some college football. How about that for a change, right? We're going to do some college football on the number one ranked show, which is about college football, and this will be our cadence going forward. A lot of content came out in March and April, specifically April. Myself, producer Kat, director John Marcus, associate producer Tyler Wojak, social media maven, Javion Duncan, our leader screening, Rachel Cohn, we've been turning it out for you. We love what we're doing, and we love that you have been consuming what we are creating. As we go through the USFL season, all the way to July 3rd, where your man will be in Canton, Ohio, for the championship game, we will continue to keep this Tuesday to Thursday rotation. You're going to get twice as much bang for your buck as we head into media days, and then we will readjust the schedule because... I don't know about you, but like, I'm, I'm kind of excited for the 2022 college football season. And we have lots, lots to discuss. All right. That is it for me. Deuces.